This is a memorial video for Martin Earl Hardy, a loving husband and a wonderful father. We were married for 62 years. I like to tell a story about the third grade. Uh, it was October, and uh, I, I, my pencil fell off the desk, and I was kind of groping around on the floor trying to find my pencil on the floor. And I looked up ahead of me, and I looked over to the side, and everybody had shoes on. <laughs> I looked, I looked all over the class. <laughs> I was the only person without shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, gee whiz. That's a true story. These poor guys, their moms make them put shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was the luckiest one. <laughs> I've got so many great memories of Dad that I can share. When I was a kid on special occasions, Dad would take us to the 7-Eleven in the back of our 67 Cougar to get Slurpees for dessert. Those were fun times. Also, when I was younger, Dad would let me help fix the cars and change the oil and brake pads or whatever. I always wondered, how did he knew so much about so many things, like how to fix cars? Dad loved his projects and loved to fix things around the house, and many times with some bailing wire twist ties, it seemed to give him great satisfaction. And Dad never saw a wall that didn't need two coats of paint. <laughs> Dad liked to talk with me about inventions. Um, Dad many times would share an idea about a world-changing invention, but it usually involved an F9 jet engine. When I would talk to Dad about something new in my life or a new invention idea, it would usually be followed by a fantastic or a woohoo. What do you think of mom's race? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Love that first place. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Later in life, after mom and dad retired to San Jose, I remember that dad really enjoyed his workouts at the local gym, all his neighborhood friends, and attending his school reunions. I feel so lucky to have such an amazing and loving father. When Jack Boris says, Grandma, Grandpa, did you ever get timeouts? Um, I don't remember a timeout. No, that, that, that was more recent than that. Which is kind of amazing when I think about it. Is there an alternative? But I have been told that uh, at one point my dad came home <clears throat> and found me tied to the kitchen table with a small rope. <laughs> <laughs> I call that a time <laughs> and, and he told Mom not to do that again. <laughs> Dad and Mom made sure we had family vacation time. When we moved to Virginia in 1970, Dad had a big surprise waiting for us. To Mom especially, it was a pop-up camper. We had many trips in the camper, but our annual trip was to Sandbridge Beach in Virginia. Being a Navy guy, family time involved boating, of course. Dad bought a sunflower sailboat and tried to teach us all how to sail. I think he was pretty disappointed that none of us seemed to have any real interest in it. So then he bought a canoe, but we didn't have any real interest in paddling either. So he rigged up the canoe to accommodate an outboard motor. That was definitely more of interest, though it quickly became the hardy sightseeing tour boat. Any guests we had were required to cruise along the Potomac with Dad as boat captain and tour guide. The most extravagant vacation we took was going to Europe in 1972. We flew for free using Dad's military space A privileges. Going over there was great. We were able to use the Admiral's plane. 
It was such a luxury, but coming back wasn't so great. We got a ride home in a C-130, riding in the cargo hole, in jump seats, and eating rations from a brown paper bag. But Dad was determined to do Europe, as the book claimed, Europe on $5 a day. He rented a five-seater car for the seven of us, and we squeezed in. If Dad wanted togetherness, we definitely had that. But of course, many of our vacations included skiing, especially around the holidays. Our extended Virginia family included the Woods family, and our two families had many memorable ski trips in West Virginia. When mom and dad moved to California, the family trips were at Christmas time to Park City, Utah. On April 3rd, 1997, dad turned 70, and mom drove dad to Park City for his birthday so he could get his free ski pass that he was finally eligible for. But dad didn't need to be on vacation to really enjoy life in his family. He gave any visitor to the house a special warm greeting and treated you as if you just made this the best day ever. I will forever cherish all the memories of dad, but I will forever miss hearing him greet me with, Hello, Karen Dahl. Cougar. Oh, we, we, we were uh, strapping runs. They had uh, guns somewhere. <laughs> but we'd, we'd roll in on the target and shoot 20 millimeters down, and then we'd drop four 500-pound uh, bombs. That one incident that you had a bomb hit, were well, you were in this kind of plane? Yes. This is F, the F-9. F-9. Yeah, the, uh, the anti-aircraft shell hit a bomb, and the bomb did not explode, but it, it, it opened up the bomb like a flower, and uh, it also blew the flaps off the airplane, so I couldn't go back to the ship. So uh, I had to go land ashore. To get a free ride back to the ship. What year was that, Dad? Uh, 50, 52. F 8 U. I flew the F 8 U 1P, which is a photo version of this airplane. And my airplane had uh, cameras instead of. Uh, And on, on takeoff, if you took off in afterburner, you have to keep your nose up 30 degrees or it would go through Mach 1 on takeoff. Was it fun? Oh, awesome. <laughs> Dad was the best dad anyone could ask for. What an amazing role model he was for all of us. Each day, Dad lived to the fullest. The day was always a job well done and with gratitude. Every day was a good day. He had a strong sense of duty, obligation, and obedience to his superiors at work, to his faith, and to his family. He was disciplined and focused, which led to his many accomplishments and living a long life to almost 93 with health obstacles. A fun fact and one of my most fond memories is meeting Dad at the GW bar after his law school class on Friday night. We met many times there. I would meet him after my undergraduate class on the same day. We went to the same college at the same time. One thing that no one could deny Dad was a family man. I asked him once what was the best thing he'd ever done in life. He said, being a parent. I'm grateful for this deep love for his family and his extended family. When he heard his brother Richard was buying a place in Park City for his family to go skiing, Dad jumped on the opportunity and bought a spot for our family to attend to. That was 45 years ago and our family has attended every year since. We also went on many family reunions at Torrey Pines Beach in San Diego and in Las Vegas where he was born. 
One time he organized a large reunion of well over 100 people for a night of entertainment and fun for his mother. What I admire most about my father is not only his strength, courage, resilience, and intellectual ability, but it is his humbleness. There are awards, plaques, acknowledgments, and accomplishments. None of these were ever displayed in our home. He was truly selfless. When you spoke to dad, you would not hear about his accolades, but he would enjoy hearing what you had to say and would listen intently. In that regard, he made everyone feel important, valued, and loved. He was always thinking and giving to others, especially to his family and friends. Dad's memory and his great love for others will always live on forever and ever. Uh, we played a lot of, of uh, cowboys and Indians, especially when we were at my uncle's farm, and we would uh, we would make rubber guns by cutting out pieces of wood and and wrapping a clothespin at the back, and then we'd stretch a a band of uh, an inner tube from the front of the gun back to the to the clothespin, and we'd dash around and shoot each at each other with these with these long rubber bands. So, um, oh, but then the other thing we like to do is uh, we build uh, uh, cave forts, and we we dig these big holes in the ground with entrance places, and we find some boards and put over the top and cover the boards with dirt, and then we we spend a couple of days building these things. Then we finally get down inside, and then uh, we look at each other and say, "Now what are we supposed to do?" <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing we did was uh, we go find some some dried grapevines, and we we cut off a four-inch length and get a match, and and you could smoke it, you could puff on it. It would, it would kind of keep lighted. We thought that was pretty risque. The, the only problem was that my mom never cared. So it didn't do much good. We, we had to quit that because nobody worried about it. It's been said that the idea is to die young as late as possible. Dad eagerly embraced this principle. He worked out nearly every day throughout his later life. He also looked for ways to keep his brain engaged. I enjoyed sharing books with him. He always would read them, and I would really enjoy having discussions with him. He was constantly looking at new ideas and keeping up with the latest science and engineering developments. One of his ideas was to have solar panels installed all over the desert, and people would live in the shade created by the panels. If you drive from LA to Vegas, you can start to see this idea taking off now. He was always interested in my ideas too, even when I knew he had much more expertise than I did. Dad had several close calls with his health due to many heart surgeries starting in his 50s. He faced these with bravery, but also smartly. He adapted his diet and exercise style to allow him to stay fit. He researched and was constantly on top of the latest information. He was way ahead of his time in figuring out that protein was good and carbs were bad. We all took note of this. He took charge of his own personal health and that influenced me and my siblings approach to our health. Do the research, get many opinions, make smart decisions. To his very last days, my dad taught us how to grow old smartly and with grace. We were all blessed that he was able to live so young for so long. Great. So I think the question here is from, uh, we have two questions. One from Jimmy Suntall says, what varsity sports did you play and what was your favorite moment? Well, uh, the biggest event of the year was kind of realized uh, kind of later on. Uh, we had a superb football year. 
I had played a lot of touch football when I was seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth grade, and and uh, never really thought about going out for varsity football until uh, one of the assistant coaches started a uh, a six-man team, and uh, they came around and recruited me me on this six-man tackle football team, and we had a great season. And I really enjoyed it. And then they wanted me to join in the senior year. <clears throat> they wanted me to join the varsity. And so, so I joined, and uh, we kept winning games. And uh, we had a great line, and they would open up holes, and I'd play halfback. And once I <clears throat> got through a hole, then all one had to do was a couple of jukes to get around the halfback, and you have a touchdown. So well, there, was, there was one other guy named Benson who was much bigger than I was, and a great athlete, and everybody knew he was going to be a, a big star in college, which eventually he was. And. Uh, but the, the irony of the whole situation is that that uh, I was making more touchdowns, and I got all state. <laughs> <laughs> is this the season you went on to be undefeated? Yes, uh, and it turns out that we were undefeated and unscored upon for the whole season, and that includes a big school in San Bernardino. Uh, of course, a lot of little schools in Nevada. Uh, oh, and well, someone looked at the records and uh, and found quite an amazing thing that uh, no team had ever scored two consecutive first downs. Yes. So we thought maybe we were in the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> for high school football. Dad's career was long and distinguished. Just to highlight a few of his accomplishments, many of you know that in his 20s, he was a Top Gun pilot. In his 30s, he was an electrical engineering professor at the Naval Academy. In his 40s, he was a defense contractor. And then after that, he decided he wanted to study the law. So he attended George Washington University Law School at night and passed the bar on his first try while he was in his 50s. I'm not sure that listing those accomplishments helps anyone understand the kind of person he was. So maybe I can offer a few examples. Dad had an endless curiosity for knowledge and he was a gifted educator. I can remember when I was really small and he would pull me away from weekend cartoons to explain how the Roman arch was a marvel of engineering. And he drew on an envelope how the keystone locked the arch in shape to compress the stress. On late summer evenings, sometimes dad and I would walk around the neighborhood and he would explain the stars and planets to me. And when we went on cross country road trips, and there were many of these, um, and way before there were any iPhones to keep us entertained, Dad would quiz us on word problems or ask us to name all the states around the perimeter of the U.S. in order. Another time in the fifth grade, I was looking for a topic for a science project, and he suggested, why not the catalytic converter? I remember going to the library to ask for books on catalytic converters and getting some really strange looks from their librarians. He was always willing to help us with homework, but he loved math and logic problems the best. And it was fun to just watch him light up as he figured out the answer. Later, when I called home from school, he was always interested to hear what I was learning about. And I often brought home some of my more interesting textbooks because I knew he would actually read them and enjoy them. He was actually a voracious reader, and it always seemed to me that he digested what he read on a deeper level than anyone else I knew. He once wrote to me that his hope was that I could learn a little bit of everything, arts, biology, history, math, language, because he felt that the breadth of knowledge was much more important than specializing. 
Dad was one of those rare people who could talk intelligently on almost any subject, but he was never boring. He adored jokes, and he always had the biggest and loudest laugh at the dinner table. So Dad's career was amazing. He was a decorated war hero, a valued team member, an esteemed professor. He was truly impressive in everything he did. He was focused, careful, organized, and thoughtful. One of the things I will remember about him is that he was an excellent listener and brilliant conversationalist. He often paused to think before he replied, but it was always worth the wait. His words were always the exact truth as he saw it with no hidden agenda. I really, really miss him, and I feel how lucky we were as kids to have him as our father.